I'm saying that I want all these transformational things. And then when they start to happen, I'm like sad and crying because if I want this new reality, I have to let these things that I'm attached to go. Hello, my name is Janae. Welcome to my channel. I literally started my channel last year and I stopped posting because life, I wasn't feeling inspired and I wasn't feeling grounded in myself. And I was like, if I'm gonna post on YouTube, it needs to be very in line with who I am, not like who I am trying to portray myself to be on social media. So I was like, you know what? Let me make sure that I'm feeling really grounded and really confident in who I am and what I have to say. So we're back. I'm starting to feel different. I'm excited, but I'm also so terrified because I don't know who this new Janae is turning into which is a beautiful thing, but I think I'm also just so used to who I was and like the decisions that I made in the past and like just things that I committed to before. I'm just at that transformational point and I, I hate, <laughs> like I literally came into this year like, I'm not making a vision board because I feel like whenever I start a new year, like, oh my God, new year, new me it like doesn't work out. Since I didn't really like do a bunch of official resetting for the new year, I actually just feel different. And it's not even about me saying, oh my God, I'm gonna be this different woman. I'm gonna be this different person. But in my spirit, I just feel like one, my patience is starting to run very thin with situations and experiences that are just like not in alignment with who I am and what I want anymore. It's one thing to like see your current experience and hate it and want it to be completely different and be so annoyed by it. But then there is a difference when it goes from like annoyance to like a shift in spirit. Like, okay, I'm sitting here complaining about all the things that I don't like and all the things that I don't want. Okay, so now what am I gonna do to shift? How am I gonna make sure that my current experience, my current reality reflects what I want? Because at the end of the day, like I'm creating this life, right? So. Why would I stay in situations that don't make me feel good? Whether that's my job, whether that's a friendship or a romantic relationship, like why would I sit in that? Like I don't like it. <laughs> because I'm feeling that shift in my spirit, it's also showing up in my actions. It's showing up in the things that I can't even control. Like I think as I make that decision to transition into who I'm supposed to be, even God and the universe is like giving me signs and like reasons and is pushing me out of my comfort zone to like really get there. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's like one end, I'm so excited about the transformation, but I, and it's annoying, it's scary. It's so scary because I'm saying that I want all these transformational things. And then when they start to happen and when my current reality starts to crumble, I'm like sad and crying because what the heck is going on? Like, I don't know, maybe my brain didn't connect the dots and say, well, if I want this new reality, I have to let these things that I'm attached to go. But for some reason, like my brain is not working like that. <laughs> my brain is not working like that. Maybe it's fear change or just a testament to my current levels of comfortability, but I just know that it's beyond time for me to just let go and release. Okay, so story time. This week I was at my nine to five and just for background, I currently work in tech PR and communications. And I have to be honest, like I love working in tech because I'm living a very comfortable life. Like I really have no complaints. My bills are paid. I'm able to save, I'm able to invest. Like I can do what I need to do and be comfortable. Like I can take care of my dog. You know, I'm living comfortably and life is good. But on the other hand, it's like, extremely fast paced. I often work abnormal hours. Last summer, summer like July-ish 2023, I got promoted from a manager level position to a director level position. And like, you know, when you're getting ready to be positioned for promotion, you start working extra hard, like, you know, you, you zone in and you get to it because you are excited about, <laughs> about the paycheck that's coming on the other side of that promotion. So leading up to that promotion, like I worked so hard, I worked my off like I showed up I was working early I was working late you know I was doing what I needed to do to get promoted and so naturally it happened yay and after I did get promoted while I was really excited about all this amazing progress that was happening I was getting to do work that I never did before I got promoted I was making more money 
it also just came with so much work like it just came it just it was a lot and honestly like it took maybe two three months for me to get burned out from the new position and because like i just got so wrapped in working and doing the day-to-day -day, like i was literally pushing like 10 to 12 hour work days every single day <laughs> and there were some days like by friday i was like you know what i can't like i'll see y'all on monday but otherwise i was online that laptop was open okay and i had on my blue light glasses because i had to get the work done after that i started to realize how burnt out i actually was honestly i just decided that it wasn't on them to help me establish a healthier work-life balance like i can't I just had to be at a place where I was like, okay, I can't do everything. I can't be everywhere, always available all at once. Like I can't, it's just not sustainable. And so coming into the new year, I was like, you know what? Let me take back some control over my life and set like really healthy work-life boundaries. And so for me, this meant one, just waking up at 6 a.m. just to have the morning to myself to read, to write, to journal, to meditate, to work out, you know, just to make sure that I have space for me, at least a few hours out of the day, just so that I can kind of ease into the day. Two, I had to set the guardrail that I would not open my laptop earlier than 8 a.m. There's just nothing that pressing that requires my attention before the sun is barely even up. Like, I will talk to you guys when the sun's up, when I'm aware, after I spend some time with myself. And then on the end side of that, I was like, okay, that means I also don't wanna be online later than 6 p.m. We're in a time when the sun sets so early and. I wanna at least have some time to enjoy the sunset light when I walk my dog. Like I would like to look at the sky sometimes. <laughs> like I think that's a normal human thing to want to do. And three, just do a better job delegating and pushing back on deadlines because it's so easy when like things are super busy, you just say, yes, I can do this, yes, I can do that, yes, I can do it, yes, I can do it. You can't do everything, especially when you get to like the mid senior manager, like director level, like you can't just keep doing everything. Like you have to be able to activate your team, like delegate. So I was like, okay, those are my three goals. That's how I'm going to keep my mental sanity without cussing everybody out right now. And honestly, I had maybe three days. <laughs> I had maybe three days where I actually stuck to my boundaries. I kid you not. Like... <laughs> Bruh. Say on Thursday, I decided to go, you know what? I am going to take a lunch break. I'm going to close my laptop for 30 minutes to an hour just to have a brain break, to breathe, to recollect. Like sometimes even like taking those mental pauses like clears a lot of brain fog. Say you were working on something that you were writing. You leave, you come back, you catch all these typos. You're like, well, was I sleeping typing this? Yes, yes, you were. Take a break. Eat lunch, okay? Friday, literally. <laughs> Literally 24 hours later, I get a call from my manager that's like, that's basically saying that they're like depositioning me off of like one of these super busy accounts to like one that's like not as busy. Any normal person who was in my position that's skipping lunch, that's working 10 to 12 hours a day for months straight, any other normal person in my position would have been like, yes, thank you. Thank you for taking some of this workload off of my plate because I've been I've been saying that I want something to change because I knew this was not sustainable. Wow, I was just praying and manifesting for a healthy work-life balance and here comes my manager to save the day. My ego, my ego inflated brain, my perfectionist self immediately, immediately, instead of being grateful, jumped to, wow, am I not doing a good job? What if I'm not good enough? Oh my God, they hate me. I'm doing this poor performance. Like, I suck. I'm, I'm so bad at my job. Even though, like, nothing. Bro, I even cried because I felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job. Like, that is, that, what? What are you crying for? What are you really crying for? All that's happening now is that God and the universe or my higher self, you know, my guardian angels, they heard my prayers and they're helping me make that shift. What this shift means for me is one, detaching emotionally from my corporate job and embracing the fact that I am not living to work, I am just working to live. It is literally okay for me to be grateful for the opportunities that I have now while still having faith that there's more in store for me. I literally do not have to beat myself up for where I'm at right now. One, because it's actually a really great place to be and two, I'm so young, I have so much time to 
switch and adjust and pivot and try new things. And also like whatever final destination that I think I wanna reach, it's just completely unattainable. I will continue to evolve, my desires will continue to shift. And as I cross one thing off of my bucket list, off of my things to do, off of my goals, it's just easy for me to go, okay, so what's next? Like next goal, like what are we accomplishing next? Like what are we doing now, you know? The goalposts will always shift. I'm literally a growing being. I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly changing. Like I just know that where I'm at now is an end game. It just doesn't have to be. I don't have to box myself in like that. It just doesn't make sense to. To the shift also means that I'm accepting that I have to give myself emotional and mental space in order to really focus on what my priorities are and what makes my heart sing. Let's just joke around here. Maybe that means it's okay to be just good. Like maybe I don't have to be perfect or the best. Like maybe just being good is a good thing, especially in the workplace. I can be good at work and not perfect because if I'm perfect, I'm gonna be constantly striving for this unattainable, unreachable level of work that I will just never be able to get to. So of course, if I'm accepting that I just can be good at my job, then I have more mental and emotional space to pursue new hobbies, to start new books, to, to try new side hustles, just to explore and play. I don't know why it's so hard for me to come to terms with the fact that I can't do everything. I can't be everywhere. I can't just do it all. I am a human. I can't, I can't do it all. And really focusing on what matters to me, it's literally going to cost something. And so if focusing on having a healthy work-life balance and time for myself and my passions and my pursuit, if that's what my priorities are, that does mean that how much I show up at my nine to five is going to be impacted. Now that doesn't mean I'm just gonna do a bad job, but yeah, I have to keep those boundaries not just because I wanna focus on me and like what I wanna do in life, but also just to keep me happy as a human. Like that is a part of the human experience. Like I'm not here to just work, work, work all the time. Like I want to pursue my interests. I wanna try new things. I wanna see new places. And I just, I want to create space. I have to create space to do that. And because like I'm setting healthy boundaries there, I have more time to try the things that are gonna take me to new heights and just help me to continue to evolve. Okay, number three, and this is hard, I have to stop conflating my personal worth, my self-worth with my work output. I'm quite literally <laughs> not my work. I'm just not. I'm not a robot, I'm not a machine. I am this beautiful multi-dimensional being that has good days and I have bad days too. I'm intelligent and articulate about so many different subjects but I also acknowledge that I'm not perfect. My worth is not defined by the amount of items that I cross off my to-do list and not by how many times I get recognized at work for being a star team player. My self-worth is not limited to what I do in this physical realm. At the same time, that also means that acknowledging that my self-worth will actually be tied to the amount of time that I spend dedicating myself to what really matters to me. So rather than just being busy for busy's sake, I'm being intentional about where I put my time. I am focusing on the activities that bring value to my life. And I'm finding a healthy balance between fun, rest, and productivity. All work and no play literally makes me a dull girl. Number four, letting go of things that do not add value to my life. Baby, when I tell you, I can spend so much time scrolling on TikTok and then I'll switch over to Twitter and read the latest gossip. And then I'll go to Instagram to look at all of my favorite fashion pages and look at all the things that I really wanna buy, like hours rotating between apps. And it's actually just so unhealthy. It's such a waste of time. It is such a time suck. And I know that and I have tried time and time again to go monk mode, to delete the apps off my phone, like. <laughs> Oh my God, I've literally put my phone in black and white. Like, do y'all know how to do that? Low key, it helped a little bit, but not enough. Because I was like, still on the pages. <laughs> and then after a while, I was like, buff this, I'm putting it back in color. But no, like, it is such a time suck, it's so bad. And I noticed that I only do it when I feel like I'm trying to fill some void. Honestly, I think it is just like temporarily pacifying the situation. I definitely caught myself having like a glass of wine every night or, 
you know, drinking multiple times a week, which isn't bad, but uh, you know, if I'm drinking on Wednesday, there's no need to be drinking on Thursday and Friday. You not doing nothing that you're supposed to be doing after you drink wine. You're watching Netflix and you're falling asleep on the couch. I'm not drinking anything at all. No wine, no alcohol for at least the next two months. And honestly, I might go longer, but there's another reason why I'm doing this. I also just learned that I have acid reflux problems. <laughs> that is some old <laughs> You know what that means? I can't eat any tomatoes. I can't eat peppermint. Um, what else is it? Spicy foods? I'm Jamaican. What are you talking about? And finally, the fifth and final piece of this shift is just releasing any belief, any limiting idea that I have to be realistic and practical. When I tell you I have been realistic, I've been practical, I've been responsible for as long as I can remember, I have calculated every single risk. I have remained cautious of that risk. I have changed my mind because of the risk. I have stopped myself from doing things that I wanna do because of the risk. Like everything has been so calculated in my life. Like I've had to, I've had big dreams and I've scaled back on them because I was told that I needed to be practical. You know, I was raised by Caribbean immigrants and they came to America to create a better life for us, to help us achieve the American dream. What do you mean you're not going to med school or law school? I did not realize how brainwashing that was for me until like it was my senior year of college. I was getting ready to study for and take the LSAT and I bought all the prep materials. I, I think I registered for the test, whatever I did, I spent some money. It was expensive already, that was one thing. Anyways, I opened that LSAT book and I was like, I'm not doing this, like, I'm not passionate about this. I don't care enough about this to invest and spend the amount of money that I'm, know I'm gonna have to invest in going to law school for three years. It's just not something that was in my heart and I think touching that LSAT book made me realize it. Anyways, I went to my parents to tell them <laughs> and you can only imagine what the response is. I had to have a full backup plan, a road map, I had to have the idea for my next move like immediately, like it was a lot. But I literally didn't care, like this was my time to finally buck at them. I didn't buck at them obviously, they would have told me up, but <laughs> this was just my opportunity to like stand in my power and make a decision for me that was good for me. It was just my opportunity to really build trust in myself and the decisions that I would make for myself. And I just feel that now I'm being called to follow my heart again in the same way. I had to muster up so much courage to break that news to my parents and I think now I have to muster up that same amount of courage if not more to get to the next level I have to continue to challenge what my limiting beliefs are to get to where I want to go I don't know if it's because I'm a Taurus and I'm stubborn I've been so attached to like my current life I just know that it's all grounded in my ego and once I'm able to release my ego, I can release the attachments and I can create new experiences for myself in my life that are, I don't know, like I, I can't tell you it's on the other side. That's what makes it scary. <laughs> That's literally what makes it terrifying, but I still have that feeling that it's gonna be good for me. And I don't have a clearly detailed roadmap with signs for the rest stops and the destination there. And who does? Like, I don't, nobody has a roadmap. Life would be boring. And like the whole point is to live in the present. I do know that the destination for me means financial freedom, freedom of time, freedom of resources. And in order to really get there, I have to be present. I have to live a life that's fulfilling for me. I have to make room for the transformation to happen. This is just a time for me to take up as much space as possible, to trust myself, to go for it, explore the things that really make my heart sing, that get me so excited to wake up in the morning. I'm excited for this era. I'm nervous as hell, but I know that it's going to be, I just know that it's gonna be good. If you enjoy this video like comment subscribe i am making it a personal goal to post these once a week is there anything else i want to say no i think that's it i'm kind of tired of talking too talk to you later